All right, concept four, we're going to be talking about human impact on the environment. So how can humans maintain a sustainable ecosystem? That's kind of the driving question. Um, so first we need to know what sustainability is. It's a balance between Earth's resources, so what Earth has, human needs, so what we need or want, and then also the needs of all the other living things on Earth. And one of the things that we're going to look at in class is ecological or carbon footprints. This is kind of a way of quantifying human impact on the environment. It measures the amount of carbon that's emitted and its environmental impact because carbon emissions by humans is one of the biggest ways that we negatively affect the environment. So first, there's a couple types, or there's two types of resources that, in terms of what Earth has and what we're using. First are renewable resources. These are resources that are produced or replenished more quickly than they are consumed. So this is stuff like oxygen, wood, water currently, sunlight, wind. We're not, we're using it and we're able to replace it faster than we're using it. So we're not running out of it. I think this is like every time I go to the grocery store, there's always Cheerios. You know, Cheerios are renewable. They never run out. People are buying them, but they're always getting replenished on the shelf before they're running out. Okay, those are renewable resources. Non-renewable are resources that are consumed or used more quickly than they can be replenished or created. This is like fossil fuels, like coal, oil, and natural gas, or metal, or plastic. This is like in South Carolina when there is the threat of snow, and you go to the store and there's literally no bread on the counters. It's, people have wiped it out and they aren't able to replenish it fast enough. Um, so that's what we're talking about with non-renewable. And so resources can change. You know, they, like water is currently renewable, but if we polluted too much water, it could become a non-renewable resource. So they're kind of, they can fluctuate. But in general, these are current examples of renewable resources and current examples of non-renewable. And so one of the ways that we can live sustainably is by using resources that are renewable that we're not running out of. Now, technology has a big effect on sustainability in both good ways and in bad. So it contributes to air, water, and land pollution, but it also provides cleaner energy options, waste management um, techniques, pollution cleanup, that kind of thing. So we're going to look at three kind of categories or types of technology that influence um, our ability to be, live sustainably. So first is agricultural technology. The goal of agricultural technology is to increase food productivity. We want food faster and we want it cheaper. The pros of agricultural technology um, are here just a few. So first is contour farming, which you can see a picture of here, which is really cool. This is a farming technique that helps to um, prevent erosion and just to keep um, the land reusable over and over again. Fertilizers also help us, you know, grow the best tomatoes and the best um, crops that we can have. Um, and then farming machinery also helps us to make food a lot faster because we can plow fields better and all of that stuff. Cons, though, are fertilizers add, we know from our geochemical cycles concept, they add way too much nitrogen, which alters the chemistry of the soil, um, which is not good. And then farming machinery tends to run on fossil fuels, and so we're running on non-renewable resources, and we're also creating pollution. So pros and cons you'll see of each type of technology we talk about. Industrial technology. The goal is to increase our manufacturing efficiency, transportation, and communication. So we all want to be able to talk as quickly as possible, as cheaply as possible. We want to get places as quickly and cheaply as possible, and we want our many. We want to get products and goods really cheaply also. So pros is we're able to do all of these things faster and cheaper. Cons, um, again, I'm just listing a few, not every con, but here's a few. First is the creation of CFCs or chlorofluorohydrocarbons. Um, anytime you get something from like Amazon or people use, um, they're doing like plated or blue apron or these things where they're sending food in packaging, they're using um, refrigerants and foam packaging materials, and these create CFCs, which are damaging to the environment, which we'll talk about a little bit more. 
um, basically they just deplete the ozone layer, so they're allowing too much sunlight into the earth, um, which can not be good in terms of global warming, which we'll talk about later. Also burning fossil fuels, that adds too many greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, which is causing us to trap too much heat in, and it also produces acid rain. And we know that acid rain, it lowers the soil pH and makes it more acidic. It takes nutrients from soil, and it also just changes um, the pH of water, which can affect what organisms can live in it. So lots of negative effects of these types of pollution. And then last is alternative energy technologies. Their goal is to provide clean energy to power society without negatively influencing the atmosphere. So we're looking for, we want to use renewable resources that aren't damaging to our environment. The pro is that we're able to decrease the use of fossil fuels, which um, you know create greenhouse gases and are also non-renewable. We're going to run out of one day. Um, and we're using renewable resources. Cons um, mainly is expensive. You know, solar panels, windmills are great, but they can be expensive. Um, and the infrastructure alone just to set them up can be really expensive. Another con specifically for nuclear is it creates radioactive waste, which you know, we have ways of containing, but if those containing structures, you know, leak, we have serious problems and can cause serious disease. Now, one thing we've got to talk about, just to kind of wrap this up, is the greenhouse effect. Um, so, this is not a debate. The greenhouse effect is a real, and this you are alive and able to live on Earth because of the greenhouse effect. It is basically just the normal warming effect that of when gases get trapped in our atmosphere. Greenhouse gases are things like carbon dioxide, oxygen, methane, which is CH4, water vapor. Um, they basically just, sunlight comes in, solar energy comes in, and some of it is absorbed by Earth and some is reflected or bounces off. And greenhouse gases cause some of it to stay in and to trap it. And some of it does escape into space, but some of it, the heat does get trapped. And the heat that gets trapped allows Earth to maintain a temperature range. And because of the temperature range of Earth, life can grow on Earth, and it can't grow on other planets. And so the greenhouse effect um, prevents heat from escaping to the atmosphere, so some of it, not all, stays trapped. And this is good for life on Earth to exist. Now, global warming is kind of caused by two things. One, the ozone layer kind of protects us from taking in too much sunlight so there's the ozone layers out here and it kind of prevents some solar energy from coming in so cfc's deplete the ozone layer so we're bringing in too many uv rays but the main problem is the burning of fossil fuels combustion adds way more increased greenhouse gases so not only are we letting more sunlight in but we're also trapping more sunlight due to the increase in greenhouse gases thus we're increasing the overall temperature of earth um, which is not good for things like our friends, the polar bears. So I'll draw a diagram of this on the board to try to explain this a little better because it can be a little counterintuitive. But there's also a really good crash course about human impact also um, that I suggest you Google. We'll watch it in class, but you can YouTube it, Crash Course Human Impact, and it'll talk a little bit more about this also. But that's just a quick little summary of Concept 4 Notes on Human Impact.